Hi, everybody, and thanks uh, for coming out tonight to uh, Thankathon 2020, day four. Tonight, we are talking food, and uh, I'm super excited about it. So Thankathon is a community gratitude challenge. And what exactly is that? Well, um, we partnered with the Royal Columbian Hospital Foundation. My name's Arnold Smith. I'm the CEO of the New West Chamber. And we wanted to do something for the community because, you know, from my perspective, there was a lot of stress and anxiety out there. And we really um, wanted to do something that um, really would support uh, the community. So I just got a little message there, so I got distracted. But we wanted to support the community to, um, to feel better. And I know uh, from uh, past experience and research that uh, gratitude is actually a real powerful antidote to stress and anxiety. So we put our heads together and came up with Thankathon 2020. Uh, we're encouraging people to post thank you messages to either their um, uh, either their favorite frontline worker or their favorite small business owner or um, maybe just a friend or neighbor who really stepped up during the crisis. So um, if if you want to do that, just go on any of your social channels, use the hashtag Thankathon2020. And uh, there's also a social media contest where you can win an $1,100 prize package with Alpine credits. And all those details are on the website at thankathon.ca. So make sure you take a tour around. Tonight is uh, sponsored by Piva Modern Italian. So we're very grateful for them. Uh, they do a ton of uh, stuff for the community. And so thank you very much, uh, Piva Modern Italian, for sponsoring tonight. And I'm excited that uh, the head chef at Piva, uh, Subraz Abdullah, has actually shared with us a video on how to make uh, like the perfect Pomodoro. So that's going to be later in the show, and I'm really excited. Now, my co-host tonight is, um, I'm really excited. Her name's Karen Ann Davidson. She's a, a, a food and lifestyle blogger. And she just sent me a message that she was having trouble firing up your video. Um, uh, Karen, try again. I think that uh, I made you uh, a co-host, so you should be able to, to, uh, to jump on now. I am doing my best. There you go. Oh, you were there. Uh, you're, you're there and you're gone. You're teasing us. Anyway, so um, uh, thanks for coming, Karen. So Karen has lived in New Westminster uh, her entire life. And uh, like I said, she's a food and lifestyle blogger, and her mission is actually to support 100 local food products. So I think that's super cool. And tonight we are talking everything delicious. We're featuring some food tips from local chefs. We've got, uh, like I said, Subraz from Ab Abdullah. We've got a great tip from... Uh, uh, from El Santo on making guacamole. And then we also have uh, some tips on making a turkey. So that's super uh, uh, appropriate for right before Thanksgiving. Welcome, Karen. Thank you for having me, Arnold. This is a great opportunity to um, show some love on my very personal hyper-local community. I'm really glad to be here. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. I'm just waiting for my takeout. Guess where I'm getting takeout from tonight? I have no idea. Where are you getting takeout from tonight? So yeah, Vegan Piva is our Piva. Sponsor, So uh, nice. that's why I decided, yeah, let's get takeout from Piva tonight. That Man. makes complete sense to me. <laughs> you know, it's so interesting because of course Piva didn't offer takeout before the pandemic hit. That was something they added after. So uh, I know when I spoke with Chris about that, they really uh, were committed to making sure that people had the same kind of food experience with their takeout than they had with the in dining. So I thought that was really cool. I just think that they do a great job of um, uh, taking care of their customers. I know I've been in there a few times since the pandemic hit and they just they really um, are doing a good job at um, having the experience be as safe as possible, while at the same time not really impacting, you know, your feelings of uh, of still being there in the atmosphere. So, uh, big thumbs up to Piva. Um, so, since this is a gratitude challenge, I'm wondering if we can start with sharing what are you grateful for today? I am grateful for. Um where I actually live, where my place is located, I'm grateful for my view and my deck and all the light that I get because it's just so uplifting for me. And a lot of the time when you're throwing your best to stay home, it really is challenging to stay positive, I will say. So for me, it's being able to look um, out my balcony doors and see the Fraser River and just have a lot of light coming in. That's what I'm grateful for today. 
It's so beautiful. We're, we're really uh, lucky to live in such a, a, a great place in the world. I mean, the neighborhoods, my neighbors, the, the city, it's, it's really beautiful. Uh, I just want to give a shout out to kind of like a coworker colleague, Nimi Bangert. Uh, she runs our connections programs at the chamber. And I just wanted to say that, you know, like every time I interact with her, um, you know, socially distant, of course, we have really strict protocols in the office, but I happened to see her at the office today. And she's just so encouraging. She's so upbeat. She's so easy to talk to. And I just, uh, it's real, I'm really grateful for her uh, to, um, uh, to be around because she certainly makes a difference in, uh, in my life uh, and working because it can be kind of stressful in this role that I'm in here. It actually goes right in line with just surround the people that you, that you that make you feel good, right? Like surround your people, you with those people, and it just makes everything better for you too. You could be having a moment, and yeah. that person is just going to inspire you and lift you up, and you you will very possibly forget about what that ever was bothering you. So that's awesome. Yeah, well, and, and that's one of the really powerful things about gratitude. I mean, it's not something that naturally comes. It's not something that just pops up. Oh, I'm going to be grateful. It really has to be something you choose, especially when you are feeling out of sorts or you're having a moment, as you say. And, you know, if you can train yourself to um, to in that moment when you're feeling like or to, to, to actually say, OK, wait a minute, what am I grateful for right now? you're literally it changes your entire physiology like it, it changes the chemicals going on in your body um and now you, you can go right back it does not like a, a a permanent fix but in that moment it can really help and if you can stay in that place then it can really train solve that yeah with the train the brain it's like hang on a minute what am i grateful for i could be grateful for having my fuzzy water with me right now it, yeah. it, it just changes i totally agree the other thing that yeah. i I believe that gratitude does is that it um, helps our immune system. It does. That's right. You're not so angst on the inside, right? You're just like allowing and trying to be more free with your thinking and just don't get all bent out of shape. Yeah. On Monday, um, we featured an interview by uh, a woman named Dr. Jyoti Samra, who uh, was part of creating the mental health standards for workplaces across Canada. Oh, wow. And so she was talking about the science of gratitude. So that uh, in, that video is featured on the Monday um, uh, site. So if you go to the science of gratitude on thankathon.ca nightly entertainment and go to that, uh, that there's a link there for the recording. Watch that. Just amazing what gratitude, like there's been a ton of research on it. And um, anyway, but we're not talking food. We're talking gratitude. So let's shift gears here. Um, <laughs> So, you know, we're going to share a bunch of tips, but um, so we're going to start with like a recent discovery. So I have one that just blew me away, but I'm going to let you share first. So what, what is something that you recently discovered in terms of cooking? Scrambled eggs. So here's the thing. Okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Scrambled eggs. Okay. It's like, oh, I know how to cook scrambled eggs. No, you don't. You scramble your eggs and you put a drop or two of water in, depending on how many eggs you're making. Mix them up, low and slow and constantly stir. You know how you can get the brown coating on your eggs on the bottom, like, hello, like, because we're in the fast paced world, it's like, you're always wanting, let's get it done, let's get it done. No, low and slow and continually stir it. And it will come around, you'll be like, okay, okay. But you will thank me for the creamiest eggs you have ever had in your life. And just a few drops of water. Just a few drops of water because it allows some expansion of the eggs. It's so good. It's so good. Okay, I'll, I'll try that. I'm, you know, I'm not a fan of scrambled eggs. So, I mean, that maybe that's going to change my mind. Because, of course, you can add some great stuff and add some salsa or, you know, herbs or whatever. So, but my wife loves scrambled eggs. So, maybe so what I'll do is this weekend, I'll make her really nice scrambled eggs. I'll use this tip. And then I can be like, oh, look at me, uh, you know, gotten the, uh, over there. Anyway, I, you know what? My, um, it, you know, it's not even my tip. I don't know why I'm sharing it. But uh, for my birthday, which was a couple of weeks back, my wife made ribs. So we just got the ribs from Costco, two big packages. And I've never, you know, I love meat. I'm a, I'm a carnivore through and through, but I've never made ribs. So she goes in and she's like, she's making me ribs. And I didn't help at all. I was super, I went golfing that day or something. And, and uh, so she made ribs. It's you put them in the Instapot for about 30 minutes. The Instapot, and like, and so 30 minutes, and they come out and the, it's falling off, and then it's like 20 minutes on the barbecue or in the in the oven with the sauce. 
And these ribs were incredible. My kids just devoured them. I mean, it was fantastic. I was like, I mean, usually ribs are like, you know, a four to six hour process, exactly. which is why I'm like, I don't, who's got yeah. time for that? I don't got time for that. But now that I know that you can do it in the Instapot, I'm like, I, you know, if ribs were as cheap as broccoli, I would eat them every day. Uh, anyway, so um, we got a bunch of videos. I know that everybody doesn't want to hear just from us. Uh, we have a great video from Subraz Abdullah from Piva, and he really goes through the process of like, what do they, how do they make their Pomodoro? And so I'm going to throw it over to New West TV to uh, play that video. Um, and so after that video, we'll come back and we've got some really other great tips we're going to talk about. Well, we prepared. So the pan, home, electric, you can see the pan I use this. So, uh, you can see we have all these kind of here. So an ounce of olive oil. And a lightly seasoned olive oil. About a quarter teaspoon of salt. And let your oil heat up. About a half a cup of onion. Sauteed onions till they're clear. And we're now one cup of the grape tomatoes we chopped earlier. I like to saute my onions with the tomatoes to get some of the tomato flavor out, as you'll see in the video. Parsley, I prefer over uh, curly parsley, so flat leaf, they'll call it, or curly parsley, but always buy Italian parsley, I find that it has more flavor. You want to cook it properly, turn it back up. What you don't want when you cook with olive oil on a gas stove is the oil, the olive oil to catch fire. The olive oil catches fire, it will taste like kerosene. So when the pan gets too hot, turn it down. You can also move it off the heat so it doesn't uh, catch flame inside. Uh, but another tip, do not burn olive oil because it will taste like kerosene. Now also if you chop your tomato in the back, it will release some juices. So let's do that and you'll see the The garlic, the garlic. So as you can see, the tomatoes are releasing the juices and it's uh, getting like an orangish tint to it. You can use less onions, more tomatoes, whatever you like. This is just a recipe that I love. I love onions, I love tomatoes, and I love garlic. So Caramelizing it at this point. Uh, one more rule for cooking pasta. So when you're making pasta at home, uh, a good portion size for myself, I would say it's 200 grams of cooked pasta weight. So typically what that means is you're cooking spaghetti or any noodle at home. If you cook 100, gra 100 grams of raw pasta, it will always double to 200 grams. So if you cook 50 grams of raw weight, it'll become 100 grams of cooked weight. We can gauge of how much you want. Uh, typically, I use 200 grams of piva, so we'll cook 100 grams. It'll turn into 200, and it's, uh, I find that uh, good enough portion to get full. But if you want to use less, you can use less. But remember the rule of thumb: it's one to two. So when you cook one gram of penne, it'll become two grams of penne. For example. 
So as you can see, it's caramelizing very nicely. My cooking with simple ingredients as well, not too much going on. This, we have a three portion, but this is 200 grams of cooked spaghetti. It was 100 grams. And also, once you cook spaghetti, uh, I cook mine to about eight minutes al dente. Uh, do not shock it in cold water. The pores of the noodle are open. So at home, when you shock it in cold water, they'll overcook it more and the water will get in. So what I recommend is if you're able to drain it, lay it out in a tray to dry. Just simply put a little bit of uh, vegetable oil in order for the noodle not to stick. And you can leave it in the fridge for a couple of days. So I know at home, everyone might have a little bit of trouble with the noodles sticking together if they don't eat it. Use a little bit of vegetable oil and it'll last. And it'll be, it'll be loose too. It'll be loose like this. So this barely has any, but it's got a little bit of sheen because that's what we use. So that's where we're able to handle it. So I'm happy with that, but I'd like more olive oil. So I'm gonna add another ounce. Another ounce added. Now you want a little bit of pasta water. And then you noodle as well. You do the noodle. As you can see. Nice pomodoro. And add a little bit of pepper at the end. You can add pepper, chili flakes, spice it up. You can also add arugula, you can finish with corn. Oh yeah, that that looks so good, man. Uh, you must be looking forward to your uh, your I dinner know, it coming. It just got here. It just got here. Man, that's so good. You know what I was thinking? I almost always put the garlic first, I was and uh, and and so I was confused. I think something's happening with your mic, Karen. When you when you talk loud, I think it shuts out. I don't know if you have a dampener on there or something. That you try again. Just make sure. Say something. How is this? That's good. I just want to talk about the Italian parsley. Yeah. That, that actually is another tip that I didn't know for years that Italian parsley had so much great flavor as opposed to, you know, the curly leaf that you get um, on a sandwich platter just for extra looking pretty. Uh, but yeah, I absolutely love um, Italian parsley. It's great. It's great. Love it. Love um it. I, uh, I really miss cooking. I have an induction stove at home, but I really miss cooking with a gas stove. I, I One of my first jobs was actually at Anton's Pasta. So I learned, uh, I did every job in that restaurant except for manager and bartender. I made the <laughs> pasta, I was the dishwasher, I made, I cooked, I cleaned, I did everything. So I really cut my teeth. But yeah, um, they have two um, uh, um, old prep cooks. There was uh, Maria and Amelia. I'm sure they're not there anymore because this was like 20... 30, yeah. 30 years, 30 years ago. Wow. I, don't know, I can't even believe that. Anyway, so, um, but I, but I love just the fresh ingredients, all the pastas made fresh, the sauces, um, but and yeah. So. Portion sizes, Arnold, the portion sizes are ginormous. Yeah, I don't know how I stayed skinny, but I, I apparently <laughs> I've got a high metabolism. Um, so let me see, where are we at here? Oh yeah, so what's your favorite Italian recipe? I think it's my spaghetti. For me to cook myself, I think it's my spaghetti. And I think the reason I love that is it started when my kids were younger. I call it like get the veggies in. Get the veggies in, mm. right? It's like you have the wilted celery. You got a half a half an onion in your fridge. It's like uh -huh. you got half a zucchini in your fridge. And you're like, what am I going to do with all this stuff? 
And then you're like, okay. So I decided that I throw it on a cookie sheet, put it in the oven, put it in the blender, whirl it up with a little bit of tomato sauce. Oh, don't forget to roast the garlic in with that. That's really important. Mm. And uh, so whirl that up um, and you have an extra, extra tasty roasted vegetable tomato sauce. And we just add um, our ground meat into that. And hello, there's your spaghetti sauce. Wow, I love that tip. Yeah, it's a really good one. About, we talked about that earlier and I just love that. I mean, I love adding all kinds of veggies in the sauce. You know, we um, we grow zucchini in our garden yeah, and like, yeah. you know, like we get so many, like, what are you going to do with these things? And so we shred it and then we sneak it into the pasta sauce, um, you know, so you get to, you know, like just kind of have the shredded pasta sauce. We have like, you know, half a pound bags in our freezer and it lasts, you know, basically the whole year because you get those zucchinis like as big as your leg. They're ginormous, you know, like, and especially and you're like, right now. Yeah, one day they're like this big and the next day they're this big. You're like, how did that happen? How did that happen? The same with um, the tomatoes. Did you notice that in your do you have tomatoes in your garden? Yes, yeah. The little tomatoes, it's like, okay, I guess I have 10 tomatoes now. I just need one. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, I want to share a recipe. Uh, so I, uh, one of my favorite roles at the, at the Anton's was actually making the Caesar salad. And so I love Caesar salad, one of my favorite things. So uh, I'm going to share um, the uh, the Caesar salad recipe uh, for at least it's uh, maybe it's not exactly the same, but the, you know what I remember from the the recipe. So um, it starts with. Uh, I'm gonna write this down. Okay, it starts with olive oil and eggs, and they blend that up. Now the fast version of that, which I do most of the time now, is I just start with mayo. Because, you know, ultimately that's sweet. So you yeah. start with a couple of scoops of mayo. But if you want the super authentic, you go with the olive oil and the eggs and you mix that up. Uh, then, of course, you've got your garlic. You've got your um, Worcestershire sauce. You know, when I was writing that down, I was like, is it Worcester? Is it Worcestershire? Worcestershire. I can never say Worcestershire? it either. Worcestershire? You know, like, I, was like, I can't remember how to say that. So now everybody's going to know. Everybody knows that one, Arnold. The yeah. goes in the Caesar. And then it's got then Tabasco and or Frank's Red Hot. Um, and then uh, Dijon mustard. Dijon. Um, and that that's just such a basic recipe. But I love that bit of kick that that Dijon. And then you can add... Um, uh, uh, did I say the anchovies yet? So either anchovy actually, paste. I was wondering. Yeah, so either anchovy paste or they actually use the whole, you know, full anchovies and they blend it up. Um, great. Oh, it's amazing. You put it, you put the all in the blender uh, and you get it all together and oh, that sauce is so good. Now I always add Parmesan cheese inside the sauce as well because I find that gets it out. But the real <laughs> secret, the real okay. secret is it's not the sauce. That's, it's how you mix it. You okay. got to mix it really well so that each leaf is well coated. There's nothing that drives me batty more than going to a restaurant and you got like a Caesar salad and you got kind of like a clump of, you know, dressing in the middle and then like a few leaves on the outside and some cheese. Like you got to take the time to mix it. It's what, it, when you coat the lettuce with the sauce, that's when each bite is a flavorful. But yeah, the second thing, the oh, second thing is the croutons because you got to have fantastic croutons. And I came across this recipe that used bacon fat in the croutons. And so you, you got the bait, you cut the, you know, you get your old bread, the old quality bread, you put, throw it in the freezer, you chop it all up, yeah. you heat up the bacon fat, you toss in the bacon fat, then I use salt and pepper. Yeah. Um, I use I use herbs through uh, the Provence, or you can use oregano, one of those two. Okay. Salt and pepper, but also chili peppers. And just adds a little bit of piece and then uh, uh, toss it with some Parmesan cheese, bacon in the oven that way. And then those, you know, like those, um, uh, you know, kind of Parmesan cheese. Anyway, so then each of those croutons is just a flavor uh, explosion. You mix it. The flavor um, bomb. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, and wow. you mix it. Make sure you mix the croutons in. Don't put them on top. Mix them in with the dressing so that okay. each of the, so you get the dressing on the croutons. too. Anyway, that was my favorite thing about Caesar salad. Um, so there you go. For those of you, uh, so if you want to recap, what's that? You wrote it all down? I did. I got it. Okay, fantastic. Hey, what is your, um? you know, uh, you talk about Piva. That's one of my favorite spots in the city to go on a date night. Like, okay. it's just, uh, um, they, they, the wine and, you know, it's like they just pair it right and it's got such a great atmosphere. Um, how about you? What's, do, you have, do you have a place that you like to go to hang out and have a drink? Or? I was going to say Piva because I love sitting at the bar. I love sitting at the bar at Piva. Um, I am a meatball freak. Like wherever I go, I have to have a meatball and they have delicious four meatballs. 
they really do. But here's the thing about sitting at the bar that I wanted to say was that I had my very first smoked drink there and they made it for me there. And I'm like, this is amazing. You could probably have 10 of them. It's just that smoky, sweet flavor. Oh, it was, it was delicious. And I'd never had one before. And I watched them make it with the smoker. It was really cool. That is really cool. Yeah. Now, I know obviously Piva is sponsored tonight, so we're giving them some love, but it is really They're a great place. Them. They do they do such it a is. good job there. Uh, and I'm, I'm also a big fan. You know, it's funny because I it didn't plan it this way, but El Santo is also another place that I love to go for. Like, it's kind of, for me, it's like more when you're in a party mood, you know, like when you want the romance and you kind of have that intimacy, I go to Piva. But when yeah. you want to like kind of, you know, like uh, hoop Moving it up a bit, uh, El Santo is <laughs> great. I love getting the tequila flight. Um, and oh. the, you ever had that? Oh, so good. I mean, they have like, three of them, but um, yeah, no, it's really it just people go tequila. You're crazy, but this when you sip really good tequila, it's like scotch. It's brilliant. Yum. Anyway, yeah. Um, uh, let's uh, you know this. So we're coming up to Thanksgiving. So we uh, we uh, reached a local chef um, from Mava Foods, and he's going to give some tips on turkey. So let's let's throw it over to uh, Chef. Oh, I think his name's on there. Oh my God, I forgot his name. Marcus von. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna butcher it. So I'll just let it see it on there. Okay. So over over to the video again. Some tips on making turkey. Excellent. Hello everyone. My name is Marcus von Albrecht. I'm a chef here at Mava Foods in Richmond, British Columbia, and I'd like to welcome all of you to the virtual fundraising efforts of the Royal Columbian Hospital Foundation and the New West Chamber. Here at Mava Foods, we were an essential service during the COVID crisis. And we've produced meals for those in need, seniors, the a Loving Spoonful, different group homes, the John Howard Society, and all of us have bunkered down to really provide services to our community in need. So today I was asked to give some helpful tips on how to cook your turkey for Thanksgiving. First thing is, pick the right bird for you. Butterball, medium, small, large, organic, hormone-free, and then what you want to do is pick one and a half pounds per person for the number of guests that you're going to have. Now, I know that we're going to be having smaller portions or a smaller amount of people this year, but that's fine because the leftovers, I'm going to show you what you can do with afterwards. Cook it for approximately 30 minutes per pound, baste it every 30 minutes. And if you put it over a rack of uh, vegetables when you're cooking, you're going to get a beautiful gravy that you're going to be proud of to serve. And last thing, ladies and gentlemen, when you cook your turkey, pull it out when it's done and leave it for 30 minutes before you slice it. And how do you know when it's done? Very easily. When the meat is coming off the bird like here. See how it's falling off right now? And that's what you want. You know that the bird is done. So you don't really have to be an expert or chef to come in and cook. Just simple little tips for you to make it worthwhile and pleasurable. So two questions that I want to try and help you answer. How do you cut up the turkey to make it very nice and easy? And the second thing, what do you do with all the leftover turkey? First thing is you pull the turkey apart very easily, turn off to the side, turn this over, do a split. Middle bone here is not edible, so you just set off to the side. And here, we're going to rip this back off. Cutting breast off on both sides. Take the wings off. We're just going to set this there. There's a bone here that we're going to have to pull out. And we're going to carve it. I know it looks a bit of a mess right now, but it'll all come out looking really good in a couple of minutes. Save your bones because it makes great turkey soup, as you probably know already. We've let it rest for 30 minutes, and now we're going to cut it up, and you want to keep it all together as best you can. I like to put the breast meat on both sides. Not a big job, really. I know that when we were working on the online cafe society, we cook up Thanksgiving about 1,200 turkeys. So you had to be quick. And the beautiful dark meat, Couple of legs, a couple of wings at the point, and voila, your turkey is done. 
gentlemen, what do you do with all the leftover turkeys? You see here, we have lots of little tidbits, and I think turkey pot pies. So the nice thing with turkey pot pies is that you mix everything together, the vegetables, the gravy, the stuffing, the turkey. You see here, I've got some little uh, individual pot pies. You can do a big one as well. Remember, you want to make it fairly thick. So, put the leftover turkey. Don't need the skin. Put the skin and the bones and stuff into your soup pot for afterwards, too. You got some leftover cranberry stuffing. Throw that in. Mashed potatoes, absolutely. And I throw in some peas and carrots here, just to give it a little new texture of the pie. And the last thing you're gonna put in is gravy. Now, no waste. And you can have the beautiful dishes. I get right in there and mix it all up. It's already got seasoning, everything's flavorful. You don't need to add anything more. And then here on your shelves, you're going to pop them a little bit of a peak in the center. Don't forget, because of the gravy in there, it's going to bubble up a bit. So when we put the tops on, you're going to have to put a bit on. That lets out the steam. It also keeps the crust together. How do you keep your crust lids on top of your tart shells? Well, very easy. I'm just going to get rid of these gloves because they're messy right now. You put a little sealant. In this case, we're using eggs. Just some simple eggs. I'm going to do a couple here. We have the tart shells on the top. I'm going to lay it over top of that. Finishing it off, we're just going to take our thumb, pull it down, go all the way around very easily. Take a knife and just trim that off. Put a little egg wash on top of it. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, let's thank all of those people on the front lines that saved lives, gave us the strength to go on. Slan Shivoff and happy Thanksgiving. All right. All right. You know, it's funny because I, I love making turkey. Uh, but uh, I can't, I mean, I would get so messy and I love the way he just ripped that apart. But I, I'm always like wearing my like nice party outfit when the turkey comes out. So and you're sharpening the knife. So my brother's a butcher. So every time he comes for dinner, uh, when we do the turkey and stuff, because we do turkey for Thanksgiving and for Christmas, and uh, he does the same thing. He just rips it all apart. We're just like, what are you doing? Exactly. It's like, what? But yeah, honestly, it, it, we do. <laughs> what? Um, it, it, it's a uh, special technique, obviously. And he's right. It's 10 times faster. And guess what? You also get more off your bird and you're, and you have this skeleton left to make your soup and um, yeah, more turkey for us, more turkey for us. So yeah, I thought that was a great method. And oh my gosh, didn't you love it that he threw the mashed potatoes in there with <laughs> for the chicken pot pie? I, I thought that it. was a spectacular idea. That's yeah. awesome. And gravy that was that was great for me yeah i know I, I i looked really good i should have eaten dinner before this because now i'm getting really really hungry that's i, actually, I had a snack but now it's waiting but see it's worse for you because you've got the smells wafting. Exactly, exactly it's like in this space somewhere uh, it's right there. Yeah. hey do you have a turkey tip a turkey tip oh turkey tip it's probably um what goes with turkey besides the cranberry sauce? I would say mashed potatoes and stuffing. So here's the mashed potatoes. Uh, they always have to be garlic mashed potatoes as far as I'm concerned. So, and the key is um, to make garlic mashed potatoes. This is a fun tip actually. You take the side of your knife on the clove of the garlic and you smush it and the peel comes off pretty much immediately. And then um, you throw, I don't know, depending on how many potatoes you're making, you throw them in the pot with your water and you boil the garlic with 
your potatoes. So there's a really good key. So do that. And then the other thing is, I don't know if you know this tip, and this is a good one. When you're making the best mashed potatoes ever, you add borzine cheese. I love that. I just discovered that like a, a couple of months ago. And then my kids were like, they went from, I don't like mashed potatoes to, I love mashed potatoes. It was like fantastic. <laughs> Um, yeah, I know. So yeah, really good one. Garlic mashed potatoes all the way. That's awesome. You know, the two tips, I don't have a ton of turkey tips, but uh, I did get a tip once to cook the turkey upside down because more of the fat, then, then you get really, um, a really moist yeah. breast, uh, uh, which, uh, you know, is always a good thing. Um, and then another tip, if you don't like that, is the bacon strips over the, over the chicken breast. And both those kind of add fat for the gravy and that sort of thing. Have you heard about sausages? You layer sausages over the top. So same idea is the bacon, but that's cool. Hey. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's a good one. Now I was going to, I thought maybe we might give a tip like on do, what would you, what's your, what's your better recipe? Do you have a better salmon recipe or a better steak flavoring or both? Well, um, okay. So the salmon recipe, like I, I love just salt and pepper. But if I'm like, I do, I just love salt and pepper. And the key to salmon, as far as I'm concerned, is you can't cook it till it's hard. Like it's, you really have to keep it moist in the middle and keep it that little pink, right? You have to. So here's an interesting tip that I got from a girlfriend whose uh, a friend owned a fishing lodge. So hello, they cook a lot of fish. Yeah. So here you put on the filet and then dab it with butter sprinkle on brown sugar like honestly i know it sounds bizarre but it's super good and so what happens actually is the the brown sugar kind of melts into the salmon okay then i know i know mind blowing again and then you mix mayonnaise ketchup worcestershire the words that we can't say you mix that up and then you put a layer of that over your salmon and put it on the barbecue. You, Wait. It is mind blowing, honestly. It's so delicious. Mayo, so delicious. mayo ketchup, and ketchup. Worcester sauce. Worcestershire, Worcestershire, all those things. Well, one of those sauces, one of those. Okay, wow. And I guess I would imagine it would probably be uh, almost 50 50 mayo ketchup or maybe uh, double mayo. <laughs> Actually, it's kind of almost looks rosé. So yes, mainly mayo, mm -hmm. little bit of ketchup, and then add a few uh, sprigs in of uh, Worcestershire. The other thing you can do is actually layer onions again, and then put that over top. Anyway, there's there's a few onions. varieties. You know it's it's interesting because I've been I've been thinking about some different salmon recipes because I've got a few that I've used, but I'm just. Um, you know, like you just want to mix it up. So those are, I'm totally trying both of those. Yeah. You know, I was at a friend's house um, I, I, when I was a teenager and, and his his mom made the salmon and it was some of the best salmon. She's like, oh, that recipe is so simple. You, you, you're going to, you're going to die. It's just, it's just mayo yeah. with soy sauce and curry and that's it. And you mix it all up and you put it on top of the salmon. And I've made this a bunch of times. Yeah. And, um, uh, and it's like for my mother-in-law, whenever I come over and I'm making salmon for her, she's like, just make that. She doesn't want anything else. I go like, well, what about if I do something innovative? She's like, no, don't innovate. Just no, do that. No, don't. No, but it, it is, it sounds, you know, like kind of kooky, but so it is I know, but delicious. It is delicious. So yeah, these, are, yeah. Ooh, good tip. I like that. Nice no, tip. I'm getting hungry again. Okay. How about, a, how about a steak recipe? Do you have any steak tips? So my favorite is actually a it's an italian dish and i can't say it so i'm not going to try so it you actually cook the steak in the fry pan you salt and pepper it but a lot of salt be generous with the salt is actually what i need to say and then you kind of coat <laughs> coat each side for, like i do like about four minutes each side for about an inch and a quarter and then you take that off let it rest and then you want to deglaze the pan with water. But the key, you do that, you let your steak sit and rest. We know this tip from the turkey. Uh, cut that up on the angle, lay it on a bed of arugula that's already been dressed with olive oil, 
salt, and Parmesan cheese. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Then you layer your steak, put it on the bed of arugula, and then you um, drizzle the uh, fond all over top of that and add some more Parmesan cheese. And you, it's so simple, Arnold. It is so simple. It's an Italian, it, I think it, it's from Florence. Uh, it's Did you say a fond? You sprinkle the a fond over it? The fond is, so when you deglaze the pan, uh -huh. what is left in the pan is called the fond. Oh, I never, I knew, I knew I'd do that, but I've never known that it was called a fond. Yeah, there you go. Fond. I'm very fond of that tip. Oh, I'm very fond of it too. <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was You tough. just said your mother-in-law in the salmon. My family's like, we're having steak. Can you make the steak in arugula, mom? And I'm like, all over it. I'll do it. That sounds great. Well, I'm I'm excited. I, I think that hopefully one of these days I'm going to get an invitation to your house for one of these backyard barbecues because it sounds like you, you know what you're doing. So you know, I, I I discovered I was at a, a a little shop somewhere and I found this. It was uh oh maybe I got it for Christmas. It was Weber coffee rub, and it was like and and I've I, I don't know if you've ever had it before, but it was so good in that. So it but it's got coffee, it's got cocoa. And it's kind of got a bit of spice to it, like so, like chili powder and paprika and garlic and salt and pepper. Um, and I've I've reproduced it uh, a bunch of times, but it's it's amazing and it just it's great for roasts and it's great for steak. I make it I made it with pork roast, I've made it with pork loin, I've made it with, but it's it's a really good one. So it's a it's the Weber coffee rub. I haven't been able to find it again, but I kept the little tin uh, to to so I could keep you know looking at the ingredients and kind of. And I think it's got one herb in there, something like um, uh, oregano or something like that. But it's it's so good. That's cool. I like the idea of the coffee because I can just imagine what what a cool, cool um, flavor that would be. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh. Uh, all right. Well, we got one more video here from El Santo, uh, and uh, they got a great tip on making guacamole. So uh, have your Mexican tips ready to go after this, Karen. So uh, over to uh, the chef at El Santo. Hi, I'm Sam. I'm the executive chef at El Santo on Columbia Street. Just to go over a couple of our COVID protocols that we've been doing now. Is masks. Everyone in the kitchen wears masks at all times. Um, we sanitize every station after any single job is done, whether we're cutting onions, whether we're filleting salmon, whether we're frying fish, whatever we do, everything is sanitized. Um, for the front of house, every table is sanitized between seatings fully. Everyone in the front of house wears masks. Everyone, when they come into work, is temperature checked to make sure that everyone's operating at a safe temperature. As far as my trick for home cooking, what we do here and is quick and easy is when you take an avocado to make guacamole, if you just push it through a cooling rack, you don't have to dice it, you don't have to skin it, it's already done. And then as you mix and stir, it will begin to break down even more and make a more smooth consistency. And always, always, always salt and pepper anything. You can do whatever you want when you're cooking. You can use any combination of spices, any flavor that you think in your head might taste good. It very well could, provided that you season it with salt and pepper. That's it. Short and sweet. You know, I, I kind of I kind of wanted them to give me the secret to some of their their like guacamole recipes. I guess that was a bit too much to ask. Been, but, um, I think it might have been because other people will hear you on books. It's true, you know, like I, I was like, hey, can you, you know, like, can we broadcast? Yeah, so I, I, I guess that's uh, that's fair, but I love that tip for how to do the guacamole or how that to do that. That's fantastic. And you know what I really like? Um, I really like it that the, um, especially restaurants, but a lot of businesses also in New West are taking that safety protocol to super high standards, right? Like, I think that it, 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 it just makes me as a consumer and wanting to come to your restaurant because you make me feel safe and comfortable. So high five to you, El Santo, for, for that, for sure.
Yeah, and you know that's one of the things that um, uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to do this is just to show that you know the restaurants really take this seriously in terms of your health and safety, and you know it's we we want these restaurants to be around you know a year from now, and you know it's it's still an impact. It's not super easy out there, so. Uh, make sure that if you if you feel comfortable going in, go in. If you don't feel comfortable going in, you know, make sure you have that date night at home because it can go. You can go a long time, right? Like you go a long time and it's like day after day and it's like feels like the same thing because you're not going out. Make that date night at home, you know, get get that special dish and, and get it done. Throw some candles on, get a nice bottle of wine. You know, if, if, if you can get rid of the kids, great. Otherwise, throw a movie on. At least that's our trick. My bad parent, probably, but you know, what you know, are you going to do? I'm sure every, uh, I, uh, every child these days is addicted to the iPad. <laughs> the last yeah. Well, we, we haven't, thankfully, uh, we, we haven't done the iPad. So uh, our kids have never had an iPad, but um, uh, that's, uh, you know, I'm sure it's, it, we'll get to there eventually, maybe. They, they, but uh, so far, so good. Awesome. Um, okay, so hey, you've got some fantastic tips. I I love guacamole, but I am not an expert, um, and they didn't give away their secret recipes, so I'm sad. But what what's your secret recipe for making guacamole? There's two ingredients besides the salt and pepper, because I totally agree with that one. Um, cumin, cumin and turmeric powder. It it's a it's a game changer when you add and lime, right? Like I. I think that one might be an obvious one to a lot of people using the lime. Lime is better than lemon. It just stops the browning process plus the flavor content. But yeah, yeah honestly, lemon, lot, pardon me, lime juice, <laughs> I said it. and uh, cumin and uh, turmeric. Honestly, delicious. I love that. And do you like add any ever add any like tomatoes or vegetables or anything like that in there, like our onions or chopped no, onions I or honestly garlic? I would do that if I need it to go farther. If I'm like, you know, when you open up an avocado and you're like, oh, it, it, yeah, it, only half. And then now you only have two left. I'm like, how do I yeah. make this go farther? I definitely would add um, some tomatoes in there for sure. And even on top, sometimes I roast uh, cherry tomatoes and I'll just put them on top. Just as garnish, because I love a pretty plate. Oh, I see. You know, that's it that's makes a fun. difference because I think that there's there's a difference between eating and you know, um, I guess you know, really having a, a dining experience. And I think that you know, if you can elevate your eating, I think that the science says that you actually digest faster. You you get more nutrients out of your food. Like if you're relaxed while you're eating, it's actually way better for you. And so you know, do those little touches because you know, I mean, oftentimes that makes the difference for uh, for everybody. So here's, here's something funny actually on that line is that I like everything to be put in a bowl to be put on the table and see my mom would just put the pot on the table, mm. right? And so I think I think my brother and I both, you, you put the pot on the table? Well, you know, back went back in my bachelor days, I've oh, been, you know, I've been married, I've been married for 20, 15 years now. So, uh, you know, that's been, uh, uh, I've, I've, I've grown out of that. Yeah, I could I think you've been taught well. So I like everything. Tomato, tomato. <laughs> Are you the main cook in your house? Uh, no, we split it pretty good, but I do love to cook. I mean, it's one, it's for me, it's actually quite Zen to cook for people, you know, whereas you know, Melanie's like, I want to do something. So either she's following a recipe or doing something simple where I'm like, you know, like, so let's have breakfast. I'm like, okay, let's make crepes and, you know, whipped cream and chop up some, you know, a different and make a coolie, you know, like, I was like, let's do a whole, and she's like, I just want toast, you know, but, but I think it's the mess, you know, like there's always this mess, but I'm like, it, I, it's, it's for my, it's my way of serving, you know, my family. I, I love it. Yeah, I totally agree with that. It's like, I'm like, okay, so whose birthday is it? So you get to pick the menu. Whoever's birthday is, pick the menu right down to the cake. So nice. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. So, um, well, hey, we have one more video from Piva. It's a short one. They just talk about um, how they cleanse their surfaces, and I think that um, uh, I think that that'd be great to just give them a cap that off. And then uh, we got one more tip each, and then we'll wrap it up. Okay, sweet. Hi, my name is Subraz Abdullah, and I'm the executive chef at Piva Modern Italian Restaurant in New Westminster. A uh, few tips: uh, we use uh, Micro Forty One. Micro clean for sanitizing all our surfaces. But something easy you can make at home is uh, 250 ml of water to 5 ml 
of bleach, mix it, then you can sanitize all your boards, your countertops. So again, the mixture is 250 ml of water and 5 ml of bleach. Mix it together and off you go. You can get spray bottles anywhere, nowadays, Amazon, wherever. And yes, but you, we use a micro clean, which is already made for us. So we sanitize all the surfaces. So thank you. Quick, easy, simple, you know, I'm, I think in this day and age, you just want to understand. And I, I like that ratio because I'm always like, well, how much bleach? You don't want like food bleach in your food. So you want to make sure you're keeping it safe. So it's good to know that ratio. Uh, yeah, I had no idea of the ratio either. I've just been. So, um, you know, that's kind of that's kind of it. That's the show. Uh, you were fantastic, Karen oh, Ann yeah, Davidson. I love this. This is awesome. Maybe we should. We should. Show. We should yeah, let's do it more often. Let's have a little like let's have a little food show. We could totally, totally do that. Pull that off. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. Uh, well, this uh, well, let's we can talk about that after. I think I think I'm gonna be pretty bored by that. But um, hey, I'm just tomorrow night. Just uh, um, I'm actually interviewing Peter Legg from Canada Wide Media, best-selling author. Um, we're talking about leadership and legacy, and uh, I just I find that man so uh, generous and fascinating. So I'm really interested to hear from him. You know, what does it take to be a great leader? But also, you know, what kind of legacy do you want to leave? How do you, because, you know, his last name is Leg, so it's Legacy. Uh, but, you know, his father is such, such big in New Westminster, you know, Bernie Lake Theater, all kinds of stuff. So uh, I think he has a, some understanding about leaving a legacy. So I'm, I'm really excited about that interview. And uh, don't forget to keep sharing your thank you posts. Um, you know, this is Thankathon 2020. So if you haven't shared a thank you post yet, just use the hashtag, hashtag Thankathon 2020. Um, and then uh, encourage your friends to share. We want to get that out there. These thank you posts linger in people's minds. You know, tag the person you're thanking so that they, um, they know. And uh, it makes a big difference. So get it out there. Let's get some goodwill going leading up to Thanksgiving. Remind everybody that even though we've lost some things, there's still lots of things to be grateful for. And don't forget to go to the Prospera Credit Union silent auction. Um, I put up this great prize today, a bottle of 12-year-old scotch. I just added it. So we're still getting uh, items trickling in. So uh, you got a couple of days left to, um, to bid on those. There's some really cool stuff in there. Uh, so check it out um, at thankathon.ca. Uh, any uh, any of the final words there, Karen Ann? Well, I just want to say that cheese sauce makes everything better. That's what I have to say. <laughs> cheese Love sauce it. makes everything better. So if all else fails, just add some cheese sauce to that. Okay, but how do you make a cheese sauce? Okay, so me personally? Yeah. I, um, I start with the basic bechamel sauce. How do you so do that? If you're not familiar with bechamel sauces, it's basically um, butter and flour. Put them both in the pot, say, but equal ratios of that until it all swirls around. It looks like actually a, a bit of a dough ball, to be honest. <laughs> it does look like a dough ball. And then you add milk and it gradually, use a whisk, a whisk, because I find that a whisk works better than a wooden spoon with this um, to get through. So the more milk you add, so say you're going to add a quarter of a cup of milk, see how it's thinned out a bit, and then just keep adding to your um, desired thickness. And then the other tip that I have, if you're going to add whatever cheese you're going to add, depending if it's a hard or soft cheese, you might want to keep a little bit more milk on hand to thin it out because it does make it a bit thicker. But honestly, yes, it, it does make everything better. What, what's your favorite cheese? Smoked, uh, smoked cheddar. Smoked cheddar. Uh, my uh, my sisters so. are so spoiled. We always get the uh, two-year aged Balderson cheese from uh, from Costco. Oh. Uh, I find it just lasts way longer than everything else. And so like they get that kind of bland cheese that you get from whatever. And from, you know, when they go to their friend's house, they go, ooh, this, this isn't cheese. <laughs> and then all, all their friends come over here and they go, oh, this is weird cheese. <laughs> oh, well, what are you going to do? You know what? It might be with that. It was, it's about the um, moisture. It's the moisture in the cheese. So the more moisture the cheese has, the faster it's going to go bad. So that's why we love the Balderson, because I love it too. Ah, fantastic. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for being here. Thanks for supporting Thankathon. Uh, thank you for uh, supporting the Chamber and Royal Columbian Hospital Foundation. Hopefully, you guys are just as hungry as I am, because I'm now starving. I'm going to go eat. Karen Ann, hopefully we can do something again soon. I had a blast. Me too. I appreciate you having me. Take care. Okay, good night, everybody. Good night.